In the hip hop community, selling out means changing your ways or turning your back on your roots, all in the name of success. While this was once a major faux pas for rappers, it's become a reality of today's musical climate. And so we ask did these rappers sell their souls for a paycheck? Black protest and the NFL have long been wrapped up together, ever since the days of all white teams, segregated stadiums, and fan and player boycotts. In 2016, quarterback Colin Kaepernick added a new notch on the protest belt by choosing not to stand for the national anthem ahead of a game. He later addressed his decision, stating, I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. As the undefeated detailed, Kaepernick started a movement. Though he was essentially blackballed from the league, he inspired protests and helped people elevate a dialogue about sustainability racism and police violence and brutality against black people. That's why it was such a shock when Sean Jay-Z Carter, rapper and icon in the black community, teamed up with the NFL. My speaking out brought about a conversation, which brought about a conversation which led to a partnership. In 2019, the NFL announced a partnership with Carter. The rapper would help the league's social justice efforts, but not everyone was thrilled with the move, according to Vox. Though Jay-Z supported Kaepernick's efforts in the past, many criticized the rapper for jumping on Kaepernick's movement without properly acknowledging it. However, Jay-Z later defended the deal by telling NBC News, I think we've moved past kneeling. I think it's time to go into actionable items. Despite being one of the most successful groups in music, the Black Eyed Peas faced more than their share of criticism. In 2011, NPR called the group Pop's Punching Bag and stated that the band was the pop entity that most aggressively embodies the spirit of late capitalism, a post-human quartet whose music is indistinguishable from advertising jingles and whose image has been ingeniously designed to appeal to all markets, part marionette, part video game, part sex toy. For some, the notion of selling out should be reserved for groups like the Black Eyed Peas, which became known for product placement and branding without actually needing to raise its profile, promote a new project, or simply because it was ironic. As Slate suggested, these insatiable revenue bots are just raking in more coin. In hindsight, it's interesting to note that this is the same group who once rapped in the song Bringing It Back that they were the only crew that came original and others are only designed for pop charts. What was that line from The Dark Knight? You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. It didn't take long for Macklemore to change his stripes. For most of the world, the rapper rose to fame with Thrift Shop, a song which promoted saving money and shopping wisely. Soon after, the single Wings promoted a similar anti-consumerist message by criticizing Nike. In the song, Macklemore states, My movement told me, be a consumer, and I consumed it. Yet while the song's lyrics may be critical of consumerism and the messages promoted by shoe companies and supporters, it appears that Macklemore became more concerned about consistent money than a consistent message. When the NBA approached him to be part of an all all-star game ad in 2013, the rapper agreed. Macklemore performed Wings in the commercial, but the end result was an entirely different song, with much of its anti-consumerist elements criticizing shoe culture erased. In fact, the last line of the track was changed altogether. The original lyrics told a story about shoes that cost more than $100 and how consumption comes all too naturally, then a realization. Now I see it's just another pair of shoes. But in the pro shoe and NBA ad, Macklemore edited his own lyrics to say that those $100 shoes were gonna make him fly. For years, Chance the Rapper carved out his own niche by releasing music outside of the traditional labels. He's been celebrated for the fact that his music was released for free. He told Vanity Fair in 2017, After I made my second mixtape and gave it away online, my plan was to sign with a label and figure out my music from there. But after meeting with the three major labels, I realized my strength was being able to offer my best work to people without any limit on it. After releasing his first two albums on SoundCloud, Chance posted his third album, Coloring Book, on Apple Music two weeks prior to it hitting the usual platform. Though it was available for free through Apple Music, many questioned how independent the move really was, which inspired the rapper to come clean about his financial arrangements. Chance tweeted in March 2017, Now that more people have tried to discredit my independence, I want to clear things up. Apple gave me half a mil and a commercial to post Coloring Book exclusively on Apple Music for two weeks. Unfortunately for Chance, it wasn't just his DIY format that was called into question. Even his musical content was later thrown into sellout territory, as some critics felt about his fourth album and first studio release, 2019's The Big Day. According to Merry Go Round magazine, Chance went from agreeable bad boy to vapid pop festival staple. He's also quite the philanthropist, so maybe being a pop festival staple has its perks. If you don't remember last time I was here, I gave $1 million to Chicago Public Schools. MC Hammer is often considered to be one of hip-hop's first sellouts. 
He was one of the first to have major endorsements, commercials, and even had a cartoon. It wasn't so much the extracurricular activities that drew criticism for Hammer, but rather his success in the pop world that led to the term, quote, sellout being lobbied about. Rolling Stone once stated, Over the past year, many hip-hop stars have openly shown disrespect for, or dissed, Hammer's musical style, his lyrics, and his newfound pop success. Yet Hammer wasn't too bothered by the criticism back then. He commented, There's jealousy and envy because my records have not only sold to the black markets, but also to the pop market. My competitors are dumbfounded and my success has confused them, especially those who thought their style and images were superior. It's not the fact that anybody hates Hammer or hates his music. They hate the change. However, it appears that Hammer's ill-fated transition from rap to pop became par for the course for many of the industry's most successful rappers today. For much of Ice Cube's multi-decade career, he was known as a hardcore West Coast rapper. The NWA turned solo rapper was an original and was involved in some of rap's most vicious beefs. The Orlando Sentinel stated that Ice Cube had a chip on his shoulder and a sneer that could curdle blood. But the rough exterior of Ice Cube's well-worn persona softened. His acting choices, which started with Boys in the Hood, also changed. Ice Cube said in a 1991 interview with the New York Times, You won't see me in no action-adventure pictures because acting is a side thing for me. Obviously, he couldn't have predicted he would become more actor than rapper one day, appearing in movies like 2005 action thriller Triple X, State of the Union. But Ice Cube's most unlikely on-screen choice probably came when he landed the lead role in Are We There Yet? Though he jokingly called his cuddly persona in the family film, quote, good acting, the actor-rapper told the Orlando Sentinel that he didn't see this shift as selling out, but rather a sign that he was simply showing more of his true self. It registers with a lot of people that I'm trying to have a new image. It was always going to be a challenge for Kanon to build on his massive hit Wave and Flag from his 2009 album Troubadour. The song was one of the anthems of that year and was taken on by Coca-Cola during the FIFA World Cup in 2010. Known for lyrics that highlighted the struggles of his life as a youth in war-torn Somalia, the rapper planned to continue speaking honestly about his life and his music. But in a 2012 opinion piece written for the New York Times, Kanon detailed how he was convinced to change the thrust of his music to cater to an American audience. He stated, When I write from the deepest part of my heart, my advisors say, I remind people too much of Somalia, which I escaped as a boy. My audience is in America, so my song should reflect the land where I have chosen to live and work. In a quest for success, the rapper listened. He changed many of the topics of his songs and even the names of some characters. It unfortunately left Kanon with music he didn't recognize after leaving his Somalian roots behind. He wrote, I had made an album in which a few genuine songs are all but drowned out by the loud siren of ambition. Fatima had become Mary and Muhammad Adam. When Travis Scott was named as one of the headliners of the 2019 Super Bowl halftime show, it caused quite the stir in the hip-hop and black community. According to the Daily Beast, Scott's agreement to perform alongside Adam Levine stood in direct contrast with those who stood in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick and had refused the big game gig. The criticisms came flooding in, and according to Variety, Jay-Z reportedly pressured Scott to reconsider. Shortly after the controversy hit, Variety suggested that Scott consulted with Kaepernick about the performance. However, Nessa Diab, Kaepernick's longtime girlfriend, posted a series of tweets disputing those claims. This included one post that pictured the dictionary definition of, quote, sellout, stating, if you are with them, then you are definitely not with us. When Nicki Minaj announced that she would be performing in Angola in 2015, she drew some criticism because the show was funded by the communications company Unitel, an organization owned in part by the ruling controversial Dos Santos family. Thor Halverson, the president of the Human Rights Foundation, released a statement questioning her decision. He stated to the New York Times, Nicki Minaj is a global artist. There's no good reason for her to do business with the corrupt Angolan dictatorship and endorse the ruler's family company. According to the National Post, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos the president of Angola at the time, had been accused of numerous instances of corruption and human rights abuse. Halverson criticized Minaj's complacency, stating, Minaj's payday is all the more jarring given that she joined the chorus of the Black Lives Matter movement. It appears that when those black lives happen to be in Angola, they matter less than a paycheck from a dictator. Minaj wouldn't be persuaded. She did, however, send out a tweet in response to the criticism, writing, Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned.
It's quite possible that Kanye West was unfamiliar with the work of Kazakhstan's president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, when he was offered $3 million to perform at the leader's grandson's wedding in 2013. So he went and performed at the ceremony and made little noise about it. When a video of the performance was posted to social media, however, the rapper's decision generated some controversy. Thor Halverson, the president of the Human Rights Foundation, was particularly vocal about it. In a statement to NPR, Halverson said, Kazakhstan is a human rights wasteland. The regime crushes freedom of speech and association. Someone like Kanye, who makes a living expressing his views, would find himself in a prison under Nazarbayev's rule. While the rapper didn't let human rights get in the way of his show, not all performers were as forgiving. In 2011, Sting canceled a scheduled performance in Kazakhstan after it was revealed to him that striking oil workers in the country were detained unfairly. In a statement to the BBC, Sting said, Hunger strikes, imprisoned workers, and tens of thousands on strike represents a virtual picket line which I have no intention of crossing. While Kanye's 2000 2013 performance wasn't the first in his many, many controversial career moments. It's not one that's been completely forgotten. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.